Hello and welcome to today's episode of Fishing with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Jordan. First up, we'll be heading to the Ohio Division of Wildlife to speak with Rich Carter about the best smallmouth bass fishing areas in central Ohio. Then, we'll head to the Scioto River in beautiful downtown Columbus and get hooked up on lots of fish. After that, we'll talk tackle with Brian Wenzel of R&R Bait and Tackle, the best in the Buckeye State. And then, we're heading back to the Scioto River for some of the best urban bass fishing in the Buckeye State. Get ready to enjoy because you are going to be informed and surprised. Fishing with Joe. You have got to love it. Got it. Come here. Oh, yeah. Goodness gracious! Oh my god, I seen him come out and grab it. Fat fish right there. Oh yeah. Alright. Ooh, nice one. Oh, I hope I can keep it buttoned up. Yeah, that is a boss right there. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Weldcraft makes the most reliable, durable boats on the planet. All welded hauls and heavy duty construction are the reasons why. With over 25 years manufacturing experience, you can't go wrong. That's why it's the boat Joe chooses to reel in the big ones. If you want the hottest boat on the planet, you better quit playing. You better get to Weldcraft. Now let's get back to the fishing and fun. If you're looking for the best bait in the Buckeye State and an awesome selection of tackle, Look no further. R&R Bait has been serving up the best for over 100 years. Our knowledgeable and friendly staff will make sure you're outfitted right for your next fishing adventure. And when you go, tell them Joe sent you. Now, let's get back to the action. Hey everybody, I'm with Mr. Rich Carter from the Ohio Division of Natural Resources and he's going to tell us a little bit about the fishing on the Scioto River. Recently you did a study of black bass. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's correct. You know, the, I've got responsibility for the 13 counties in central Ohio, fish management there. And so in 2010 we did a comprehensive survey of the Scioto River from all the way from Marion, Ohio all the way down to Circleville, Ohio. So that included, you know, all the areas above and below Griggs and then down to the Green Lawn Pool and the Town Street Pool right in downtown. So, and we did electrofishing, so, you know, that's a technique that runs a mild electrical current into the water. It stuns the fish. We pick up the fish, count them, measure them, weigh them, and then release them because by that time they're all fine. But it's a non-lethal method of, of, of obtaining information about the fish population. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we started and just talking about the fish population there, you've got the area from around Marion down to a little bit below O'Shaughnessy Reservoir and that area is kind of slow moving mm -hmm. and you have a lot of silty bottoms and so the area there, not the greatest for smallmouth or largemouth or whatnot, we caught some fish but not a lot, but when you get to O'Shaughnessy and downstream just around Columbus, then it gets really good. So from, from about, you know, three or four miles above, above O'Shaughnessy, really quality smallmouth habitat, and by smallmouth habitat I mean rocks and riffles and lots of places where there's crayfish that are living, which smallmouth love to eat, mm -hmm. as you know. And then, so that was really outstanding smallmouth fishing and we look at catch rates as a catch per unit of effort so we look at the number of fish we catch per hour really good catch rates there and then 
you get O'Shaughnessy Reservoir. We survey that for black bass, but that's just in the spring, and that's largemouth habitat mostly, and some smallmouth, but that really wasn't included in the Siren River study. But from O'Shaughnessy Reservoir down to Griggs Reservoir, that is also outstanding smallmouth habitat, and outstanding smallmouth uh, are found there. And then the best area really was from below Griggs Reservoir down to the Dublin Road Water Treatment Plant. And there the smallmouth bass population is just outstanding. It's the best of any of the stretches along the side of the river that we saw. But in general, if you talk about the smallmouth bass population in the river from, from the Dublin Road Water Treatment Plant up to above O'Shaughnessy Reservoir, it's just outstanding. And the catch rates there are, are twice as much as what you might see in some of our better smallmouth streams like at the Big Darby. For instance, everybody knows about the Big Darby, how good that is, but mm -hmm. this is better. Same way with Cocos the Cocosing River. It's, you know, it's just outstanding smallmouth habitat, great fishing there. Now, what are the catch rates like in these areas? Well, you know, we're talking about, if you talk about the number of fish per hour, mm -hmm. we're talking around between 100 to 200 fish per hour, whereas when you look at the Big Darby, you might be talking about 50 fish per hour. Wow. Something like That's that. That's an so, enormous difference. Yeah, it's a Tw big difference. Twice as many, mm -hmm. three times as many, maybe four times as many fish. Yeah. Just wow. outstanding. What is it about the Scioto that makes it so great? I think it's the habitat. So you have the rocks and then you have the, the riffles and pools. So a good combination of, of both those habitats. So that supports a diversity of smaller stuff. Mm -hmm. Crayfish or minnows, shad, whatever the, the stuff that the smallmouth need to survive. So that's, that's what's there that I think makes it really good. Wow. So we know a lot of information about the Scioto River. Mm -hmm. We know where the best fishing spots are on the Scioto River, mm -hmm. places where you can go and catch some smallmouth bass. And uh, now, what about the downtown pool yeah. that we were fishing in today's show? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit, of, a little bit more about that. Well, that you know, the, the the downtown pool and pool, you know, it's slow moving area, so it's slower, and that kind of those kinds of conditions. With those kinds of conditions, you get a fish population that develops like what you're catching, the largemouth mm -hmm. bass. You know, you get good largemouth bass fishing there. Same thing with crappies, mm -hmm. and you know, we've talked about crappies, being able to catch those there. And then you get catfish, channel catfish, an occasional flathead catfish shows up, so good catfishing in those areas. So you got the downtown pool, the town street pool that we call it here, and then you drop below to the green lawn pool, same deal, same kind of habitat, and that's the kind of fish that you see. And then once you get below green lawn, there the habitat changes a little bit. It's, it's moving through sandy habitat, a little slower moving, a little deeper pools, and that area is conducive to survival of spotted bass. Mm -hmm. And that's most of the fish that we caught below green lawn were spotted bass with, with an occasional smallmouth mixed in, but very few largemouth bass. Mm -hmm. And in one of the upcoming shows, I'm actually gonna go on the lower Scioto River and show you some of those spotted bass. So you want to make sure you stay tuned and uh, tune in every week and check out those shows because I'm going to show some of that spotted bass fishing too. So Mr. Carter, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you for all the information that you gave us. Really appreciate it and, and really enjoyed my time with you. Well, it's a pleasure being on your show. I enjoyed it as well. Well, thank you very much. All right, everybody. Now it's time to go back out on the water and catch some more fish. You better pull out the meat stick because it's swamp donkey time. Bass so big you just might bust your pole. If you want some real action, you gotta head to Spinner Bobs for the best spinner baits and buzz baits hands down. Single, double, and triple armed red hot goodness. The big man Bob knows how to hook them up. The name says it all, Spinner Bob. Now come and get you some of this at spinnerboblures.com.
Have you ever wanted to go fishing with Joe? Well, here's your chance. You can be on the boat when it all happens. Joe has the best fishing guide service in central Ohio. You can learn all the naughty little secrets no one else knows from the man himself. Just go to fishingwithjoe.com and book your trip today. Now let's get back to some fishing and fun. Gracious! Oh my gosh! That's a beast! Going for net. Get in here. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Ah, yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about. That is what I am talking about right there. People ask me about fishing in downtown Columbus. They go, Joe. You ever catch any bass in downtown Columbus? I go, yeah. I catch a big bass in downtown Columbus on spinner baits. Tons of them. Don't believe me? Those Vets Memorial behind me. I'm going to turn the boat a little bit so uh, you can see all the sights in downtown Columbus. And uh, there's the Columbia Gas Building, Levesque Tower, and there's the Santa Maria. Wow. You, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Get a good look at that one. Beautiful, beautiful downtown Columbus largemouth bass. You gotta love it. All right, Mr. Fish, time for you to go back. All right. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, there's some. There's some rocky areas underneath of this bridge. Here we go. Good one. Good one. Oh, yeah, it is. This is a good smally. Whoa. He's caught in the trolling motor. He's caught in the trolling motor. Oh, gosh. This isn't a smally at all. <laughs> Little bit of everything down here. A little bit of everything. Whoa. There we go. Big, big channel catfish. Big. I'm holding him tight because he's ready to flip out of my hands. Oh. <laughs> there he went. There we go. Large mouth. Large mouth bass. All right. I don't want to get blown over some other areas that could be, that could potentially be holding more fish. Um, here's what I'm gonna do right now. Let me do this. All right. Fans, keep looking behind me. Keep looking. Keep looking. 
keep watching, keep watching behind me. I'm gonna show you uh, one of the most unique settings to catch bass in the state of Ohio. Um, that is downtown Columbus right there. Wow, skyscrapers, trains going over bridges. That's the arena district right there where the Blue Jackets play uh, hockey games. I'm catching bass on the Scioto River, having fun, having fun. All right, here we go. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Put him back. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Thank you very much. All right. Here we go. Oh, it's a good one, too. Oh, my God, it's a good one. Oh, my God, this is a beast. This is a beast. Mm. Okay, stay on the end of the line. Stay on the end of the line. Oh, gosh, it's a catfish. Ah, he just obliterated that spinner bait. Get in the net. He's so big. I can't even hardly fit him in the net. He just gave me a bath. Wow. When you're fishing in areas like downtown Columbus, anything can happen. I'm gonna go to work on this fish right here and get him off the end of the line. <clears throat> it's a huge huge channel cat all right now as soon as I touch him I know he's gonna go crazy all right it's important to get behind those fins he's so fat I can't even get my hands around him all right here we go oh, gotta shake that hook a little bit that is a monster. That is a monster catfish. Got a little bit of blood on him. And I'm gonna wash that off. Hopefully he doesn't get away when I do that. All right. All right. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful channel cat. Beautiful catfish on a spinner bait of all things. Wow. All right, Mr. Catfish, going back. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You never know what you're going to catch in downtown Columbus. Hello, everyone. My name is Ronald Beach III and I'm with Shope's Tire Service. We go and repair tires properly. We don't plug your tires. We do maintenance on vehicles, uh, brakes, oil changes, uh, steering and suspension components. We offer road service for emergencies when you're stuck out on the side of the road. My grandfather started this company in 1967 and we've lasted three generations and we're working on the fourth generation. We're here Monday through Friday. 8 to 5.30. Saturdays is 8 to 2. We're located at 1890 South High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Come and see us. Invite us to your next blowout. Hey everybody, it's Tackle Time with Brian Wenzel, and Brian is going to go over some of the tackle that we used in this segment of the show. Brian, I see you have some tackle laid out for us. Tell we us about do, it. We do, Joe, we do. Well, spinner baits. I know you like to use spinner baits. I love to use spinner baits. We've got several different uh, kinds of spinner baits, and this is just a few of what's on the market, but these are mainly quarter ounce, eighth quarter, three sixteenths. Um, chartreuse, they all have some chartreuse in them. Um, you've got different, you know, tandem ones here. There's a lot of different makes depending on the water you're fishing. Um, and you can do a lot of different things with a spinner bait. 
changing blades, modifying them. I know that you like to modify your spinner bait, so tell us your secret there, Jeff. That's exactly what I like to do. I like to use a smaller bait, about a quarter ounce bait. I like a tandem bait with a willow leaf blade. And then what I'll do is I'll take that willow leaf blade off and replace it with an oversized blade. And what that oversized blade does is it makes the bait heavier so I can throw it a little bit farther, but it comes through the water slower. And our Ohio fish, they need a little bit of time to think about that bait and whether they want to hit it or not. And that, that slower speed coming through the water makes that fish hit that bait instead of pass it up. Yep. So you need sometimes to trigger the bait, trigger Absol the you know the bite. Absolutely. That, that's it. Absolutely. Now, Brian, so you got some line set out here. What kind of line are we going to use to, we do. to throw we've those got, baits? Um, you know, we've got a couple different types here. We've got uh, monofilament line. This is Berkeley Trilene XL, 14 pound test. This is clear line. Um, it works good. It's it's a you know, not a real expensive line. It's not hard on the wallet. Okay, we have a lot, lot of uh, different types of high-performance braided line. This is Fireline 20-pound test. Uh, it's a little more money. Um, it's a very strong. The nice thing about this, you can put a lot higher poundage on there. Like this 20-pound test, it's only um, four, four, six-pound diameter. So you have a much thinner line. You know, it helps you to cast further with a stronger line. Very sensitive. Both good lines for spinner baits, either one of them. Absolutely, and it's necessary to use the heavy line when throwing a spinner bait, especially around heavy cover. That way, at the end of the day, you don't lose a lot of spinner baits. You can just rip those baits free when you get in the weeds and you get around the tree limbs and other things that you'll be uh, encountering on the Scioto River. So you want to use a little bit heavier line like these right here. Now, Brian. What kind of rod and reel are we going to use for our own spinner baits? Well, reel wise, we use not a reel heavy. This is a bait casting reel. It's a quantum energy reel. Um, it's, a, it's a high quality reel, very smooth. It's got nine ball bearings in it, so it's just, just turning that thing is so smooth you can't feel anything but the handle going around. Um, it's a very easy, fun, fun reel. To use and we're going to put that on a six foot medium action uh, St. Corey rod, 100% graphite rod. Combination of these two and the good line, you, you just you can't go wrong with. This is very easy casting. You don't need a long rod for these uh, spinner baits, so this is I think what you throw, something mm. similar there. This is what I use. I like a six foot rod for throwing the spinner baits because it's easier to handle. At the end of the day, I've thrown that spinner bait a thousand times. A six foot rod is lighter than a six and a half foot rod. Also, when I get that little roll cast going, that six foot rod, it isn't too long and it isn't smacking the water when I make that cast. So it's a lot easier to deal with like that six foot rod right there. Now, Brian, there was another bait that I used for a little while and I ended up catching a catfish on that. And you have some of those baits sitting right here that you're gonna show us. And the old catfish, you just never know what they will eat, but they do like little crankbaits. You know, the muddy water, we use the brighter colors. This is a, they, these all have chartreuse. There's a lot of different colors, sizes. But in the muddy water, which the side of the river is very muddy most of the time, these are gonna make, uh, make it a lot easier for the fish to see and help increase you getting bit. That's it. When the water's muddy, chartreuse. When the water clears up, I switch to crawfish patterns. So I'll use something right. like brown and orange then. Something darker, that's correct. And Brian, we're gonna throw these on a lighter line yeah. than we would the spinner bait. So we're gonna use something like a 10 pound line. That way we can cast it just a little bit further and it's gonna give the bait more of a natural action as it comes through the water. Right. So a little bit lighter line and ten basically, pound test, sure. 10 pound line, basically throwing it on the same rod and reel. So uh, now you know what to use to catch some fish. You know how to work a spinner bait and we're gonna go back out in the water and we're gonna catch some more fish.
Need bait and tackle for your next fishing trip? Visit r and r Bait and Tackle. Open seven days a week, all summer long. Believe me when I say they're the best in the Buckeye State. Now let's get back to some fish catch and action. Do you know of a sizzling hot bass lake where the bite has cooled down? If so, then it's time to visit Spinner Bob's. Got him. Bob has exactly what it takes to drive those sloppy sow bass into a feeding frenzy. Tube jigs, worms, and spinners that are like cherry pie and sausage gravy to anything that swims. Ring the dinner bell. If you want to heat things up and make the water boil, type www.spinnerbobluers.com. Just don't forget to practice your hook set and tell them Emmy sent you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. From catfish to smallmouth bass. That's what I'm talking about. We've had some extremely warm weather lately. Extremely warm weather. Last night it rained quite a bit and it cooled off. These fish are on the mad bite because of it. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth bass. You gotta love that. It's in August and I'm catching them on a spinnerbait. Gotta love it. Let me show you this spinnerbait. I'm gonna actually put this fish back. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Put this fish back and show you my beat up spinnerbait. These blades have been bounced off of so many bridge piers. Most of the paint is gone. White and chartreuse skirt trailer hook. I'm fishing in an area with smallmouth bass. Got to use a trailer hook. There we go. Quarter ounce bait. I'm going to put it back to work. All right. All right. Fish was supposed to be right in there. Right there, and there could be one sitting right in this eddy right here. Oh, there he goes. There we go. Oh, yeah, another beautiful fish. They're sitting right where they're supposed to be today. When you're fishing for smallmouth, always concentrate on current. Current is an enormous factor in the life of a smallmouth bass. An enormous factor. Okay. And he just annihilated that bait. Okay. There we go. Another smallmouth bass on the spinner bait. They're just exactly where they're supposed to be right in the current every single time all right he's going back thank you mr fish thank you very very much oh yeah okay Goodness gracious, oh gosh, look at that, my goodness, look at that fish, look at that, that is a beautiful smallmouth bass, oh coming in the boat, coming in the boat, yeah, just tearing them up today, slaughter, it's a slaughter, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth bass. They are on a mad spinnerbait bite today. I can't put the spinnerbait down for very long because they just keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. Another beautiful fish. And you can see 
that this fish is a product of catch and release. It's important to fish catch and release and let these fish go so that the next guy who comes to the lake or comes to the river has an opportunity to be able to catch fish as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful fish. All right, Mr. Fish, going back home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know, I know there's a fish in this area. There has to be. Whether he hits this lure or not, I don't know. Oh, there he goes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Another beautiful smallmouth bass. Another beautiful, beautiful fish. Now in the background, you'll hear lots of noises. There are helicopters all around. There are cars going over top of the over top of bridges. You can hear all of that. You can see downtown in the background. And I'm gonna turn the boat around so you can take a look at this. Check that out. Thousands and thousands of people going to work. Yeah, I feel sorry for them. Too bad they can't be fishing. Well, that's all right. I'm gonna catch all the fish for them today. Oh yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Fish. Thank you very, very much. All right, right back to work. I don't think I can top. I don't think I can top this. <clears throat> I've caught so many. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, I was just saying I couldn't top myself ah, for the net. Come here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Okay. I've just been hammering the smallmouth. Ooh. All morning long. Hammering the smallmouth. Hammering them. And I said to myself, got to be some largemouth in the area moving around. At the last second, that fish hit the bait, right before I was getting ready to pull it up. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Let me turn this boat around. You can see the 70 bridge in the background. Everybody going back and forth to work. And then, in the background, right behind me, Beautiful, beautiful downtown Columbus. A lot of people don't think of downtown Columbus as a dynamite bass fishing destination. They should. They definitely should. Get a good close up of that fish. Beautiful downtown Columbus bass. Oh yeah, you gotta love it. All right, Mr. Fish. Going back in. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching the show. I'm glad, uh, glad that you could spend this time with me. I'm going to turn the camera off, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop fishing. <laughs> All right.